Hi everybody, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. A scientific hypothesis on natural immunity following COVID infection. Now at the end of last week, the CDC published this tweet. New CDC study. Among adults hospitalized with symptoms similar to COVID-19, unvaccinated people who had COVID-19 recently were five times more likely to test positive for COVID-19 than people who were recently fully vaccinated. They then had this graphic, get vaccinated as soon as possible. Now the study that they're referring to, the link is down below, has some very obvious flaws in its design and I saw them as soon as I looked at the study. It was a very oddly produced study. But rather than tell you what my response is and my thoughts on the study, I wanted to share with you some responses from the medical community, starting with online responses. The first here is from an epidemiologist at Harvard University. This CDC study has a major statistical flaw and the five times conclusion is wrong. It implicitly assumes that hospitalized respiratory patients are representative of the population, which they are not, trying to connect with authors. Then there was this response here. When you get in the weeds on this, you read the details and find out that this study is represented by a grand total of 89 reinfected hospitalized patients from January to September 2021, over 187 hospitals. That's the basis in which they're making this claim. Just the wording of this tweet and the JPEG used screams intentionally misleading. When the CDC intentionally misleads about natural immunity in this context, it's also disseminating vaccine misinformation at the same time. Does disinformation about vaccines help vaccines? And finally, I want to share with you this from a physician in California. As I read the CDC's latest study on natural immunity yesterday, I felt I was no longer reading a scientific paper, but a chapter out of Alice in Wonderland. The CDC just squandered its last shred of credibility. So that Alice in Wonderland line did make me smile. But rather than share with you responses of random physicians online, I want to share with you some responses of physician colleagues who contacted me after the CDC put out this information. CDC way to get more people vax, but this data is way misleading. They are purposely just grabbing the headline to sway more vaccination. But just say we want more vaccinations and be honest. Don't use some really flawed data to use it as fact. This colleague. I am dumbfounded by how political CDC is and how far they go to distort science. Their study is completely bogus as they aren't comparing known COVID illness to known COVID illness. This is contrary to the Israeli study. Completely biased and political now. And lastly, I want to share with you the response of a colleague of mine, a very well-respected specialist physician in the United Kingdom who also has a PhD in research. We sometimes don't agree on different matters and we go back and forth. He's a good friend, but here's what he had to say about this latest CDC publication. How misleading are the CDC? Have you read the actual report? They categorize anyone with cold flu symptoms irrespective of whether they test positive as a reinfection breakthrough case madness. So needless to say, a lot of questions there about this CDC study and it also runs contrary to a lot of other studies on natural immunity that have been conducted over the last few months. What I would say to the CDC is this, you are supposed to represent some of the best minds in the nation, some of the best doctors, some of the best scientists, and if you're going to put forward policy proposals, at least back them up with studies which are strong and robust. Finally, I'd like to draw your attention to the end of the publication, where it lists the conflicts of interest of the authors and researchers. And you will see that several of them have openly declared conflicts of interest, including some who have received financial support from vaccine manufacturers, including Pfizer and AstraZeneca. Needless to say, when you see these types of conflicts of interest, it does obviously raise questions and it does nothing for trust. And I'm not even talking about specifically this situation, but we see this all the time in medicine and science. The very people who are pushing certain study results are also being supported financially by companies. And when you see this happening on a large scale, it is truly an affront to good medicine or science. We have to reduce the amounts of conflicts of interest in our field. Anyway, this didn't stop the media from going all out at the end of last week, 
promoting this study result. It was all over the place. My own medical scientific hypothesis is this. If we were to conduct a proper study into this topic and we were to look at people on a large scale, if people have reasonable to good metabolic immune health, i.e. if they had no reason for immune compromise, if they weren't elderly, if they had no comorbidities, if they weren't obese, if they have had prior COVID and are demonstrating on lab tests a good degree of immunity, whether it's B cells or T cells, and remember in this study they didn't even look at what people's antibody levels were, you would find my hypothesis that infection rates, reinfection rates of COVID after natural infection are extremely low to negligible to the point where you can say that these people wouldn't benefit from a COVID-19 vaccine. That's my hypothesis. I can't prove it right now, but I can say that several other studies have shown similar findings, including a large study from the Cleveland Clinic earlier this year. And saying this is not anti-vax or going against vaccine programs. Vaccines have been amazing for humanity over the last couple of hundred years, and they are currently helping a lot of people, especially high-risk people, stay out of the hospital and avoid severe disease. And it's such a shame that even me saying this, having a hypothesis, may offend some people out there. And there are some people out there, and I'm sorry to say many of them may be in some of our leading academic medical centers who don't seem to understand that the very cornerstone of medicine and science is to have a hypothesis and then test it out. It's literally the first thing we learn in elementary school science classes. And I, on behalf of the medical profession, anyone who values the fact that medicine and science is about open scientific debate, would like to apologize to everyone out there for some of these people who have come to the forefront whose primary goal is not to find the truth and conduct rigorous studies and have rigorous debate, but to censor people. They don't like talking about things that make them uncomfortable. What an embarrassment these people are to our noble field. Having a hypothesis? That's unacceptable! Since when was medicine and science about that? Seriously folks, we've got these people everywhere and I did an exaggerated British accent there but picture an American accent and we have these people all over the place. A true disgrace. So I'd like to finish with a thought here. Many of us learn a philosophy in medical school. Not all of us remember it but it is this. The best doctors know when not to treat. For surgeons, the saying is the best surgeons know when not to operate. It is very easy, and this could apply to any profession, to throw the kitchen sink at something. And if you're holding a hammer, everything can seem like a nail. But the very best professionals out there know when something is not necessary. And I'd like to come back again to my hypothesis on natural COVID immunity, on people who have been unfortunate enough to have had COVID-19. This is something which should be researched properly. This does not go against a vaccination program in any way. And if you asked most people out there, most reasonable people in medicine and science, we know that if we're going to quote unquote reach herd immunity as a world, it is going to be very likely some combination of vaccinated and natural immunity that is going to get us there. So it is high time that authorities recognized natural immunity. Thanks everyone for listening. Dr. Sunil Dan, MedStroke Lifestyle Medicine. We'll speak again very soon.